Today's video is going to be all about my top 10 favorite fragrance releases of 2023. This list was so difficult to put together. So if you wanna find out more, then please keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you are joining. My name is Hayley and I review fragrances. As I already mentioned in the title, today's video, I am going to be talking about my top 10 favorite fragrance releases of 2023. So these are fragrances that launched in 2023. I found this list so difficult to put together. I started writing out my favorite new launches of 2023 and I got to about number 25 and I was like, I can't talk about this many fragrances. So I have condensed this down to 10 fragrances and I am missing so many good fragrance releases of 2023, but what I'm going to do is I'm filming another video very soon, which is going to be my hits and misses of 2023. So I will include different fragrances within my hits of 2023 that didn't quite make the cut for this video. And that way it will give you a little bit more variety, but trust me, this was hard. I just had to go with the fragrances that I loved the most this year. So if that's your kind of thing, Thing, then let's get into it. But before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. We are nearly at 10K. I would love to have you as part of this community. I have enjoyed being on YouTube so much this year. It has brought me so much joy. So I would love it if you could join this community if you do not already. If you already do, thank you so much for your support. I honestly appreciate you all. So now that's all out of the way, let's jump into my first favorite fragrance release of 2023. Now the first fragrance is Jani from Soradora. And I wanted to feature this one first because this is my most anticipated fragrance release of the year. I did try this one back in March, fell in love with it, and it only released recently. And wow. I am obsessed with Jani. I know many of you have tried it now and have sent me your feedback. Let me just describe how this one smells. So I'm not going to do detailed reviews in this video, but Jani smells like tart to tan. So imagine puff pastry with cinnamon apples. And my friend Ali actually explained this as smelling more like an apple pie that hasn't gone into the oven yet. So you've rolled out the puff pastry, you've cooked down the apples in cinnamon, ready to put in that uncooked puff pastry. That is what she was getting, and I completely get that too. It's a warm, spiced, caramelized apple with a puff pastry accord. It smells quite buttery, it's very gourmand. It is a little bit powdery and musky too. Definitely try and sample this one. I have mostly seen people loving this one, but of course there are going to be people that don't like it too. It's very, very gourmand. I am obsessed with Jani. You've probably seen a couple of my reviews if you are a regular viewer of my channel, but yeah, Jani is definitely one of my favorite launches this year. Next up, I'm going to go with a designer release and it is Burberry Goddess. Now, the reason why this one has become one of my favorite releases of 2023 is because I personally feel like this is the best designer vanilla fragrance. It launched this year and I absolutely love it. This is more of a straight up vanilla fragrance with a little bit of lavender in here. It's quite fresh at the same time as being sweet, dense and vanilla-y. And for that reason, it has reached this list. This is definitely going to be a popular fragrance going into 2024 too, in my opinion. The lavender gives it that kind of aromatic freshness and it stops it from being too sweet and cloying. I am sure many of you have tried this one already. Please do let me know what you think about it down in the comments, but I definitely think it's one of the best releases this year. Before I get onto the next fragrance, actually, please let me know down in the comments what your favorite new releases of 2023 have have been. I would really love to hear what you think and hopefully I might find some new discoveries too because of course I've not tried all of the fragrances in the world. Next up is 1970 by Rosendo Mateo. I'm trying to hold it somewhere where it doesn't catch the lights too badly. 
This bottle is phenomenal in person, but it is very metallic. And this is another fragrance that I sampled back in March and it was love at first sniff. It launched about a couple of months ago and I think this is such a fantastic new release of the year. It is a gourmand dream. It is tonka bean. It is smooth chocolate. And I just think this is such an incredible fragrance. You're getting a very smooth powdery chocolate note. You're getting sweet tonka bean. You are getting some kind of like dried fruits. I perceive it to be more of a dried orange note. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. And the reason why it features in this list is because it's actually really unique to my collection too. And I think this smells actually a little bit similar to Galan's Feve Gourmand, which was Gourmand Coquine. So if you like that fragrance, but maybe the price point is a little bit difficult, maybe sample 1970. This one is still expensive. I just think it's such a fantastic new release. Next up, we have Sugar Leather from Unui Nomad. Another fragrance that I sampled back in March and waited for the release of. This is the great thing about going to some of these fragrance exhibitions. You get to sample fragrances ahead of their launches, which is actually really useful for me because it builds up a little bit of anticipation and I can gather my thoughts a little bit more on it before I come to review these fragrances. Anyway, Sugar Leather, Sugar Leather. This definitely deserves to be in my top 10 favorite fragrances of the year. I am obsessed with this one. It is very, very sugary. You've got like a suede note. I don't perceive it to be a bold leather. It's more of a soft suede note. There's also cinnamon in here. I would probably call this cinnamon sugar suede or something like that. Yeah, this one is delicious. Sweet cinnamon, but still spicy. Lots of vanilla kind of that cozy tonka bean feel to it, but vanilla. It's sugary and brown sugar or muscovado sugar. And then a very soft buttery suede. Do not let the name leather put you off if you are not a leather fan. I don't really like wearing leather fragrances myself. I like them on my husband, but sugar leather, this is one I definitely wear. It's more of a sugary cinnamon, as I've mentioned, with a soft suede note amazing new release. I feel like so many of you probably have tested this already. Let me know if you love or hate it down below. It's definitely a big love for me. And if you have not sampled this one and you like the sound of a cinnamon brown sugar type of fragrance with some suede, I would recommend getting a sample of Sugar Leather because chef's kiss, amazing. Next up is Blue Talisman from Ex Nihilo. And this is such an uplifting and Broxen style scent that's also very citrusy and a little bit floral. And I thought about this list long and hard and I just think this fragrance is so underrated. It is quite new, so probably not a lot of people have tried it so far. But this is definitely a compliment magnet. It's a little bit spicy. You have some florals in here. It's got that molecule kind of ambroxin quality about it. It's fresh. It's slightly sweet. There's a little bit of citrus in here. It is perfection. I love Ex Nihilo as a brand and what they do with fragrances. This has a really interesting pear note in there. It's not too sweet in your face. It's just perfectly balanced. It took me some time to really warm up to this fragrance. I really, really enjoyed it at first sniff, but now it's a full blown love. So yeah, I feel like Blue Talisman is definitely one of the best new releases of 2023. Another Soradora is making the list and I really only wanted to include one, but truly they are both so special that they both had to make the list. So this one is Mallow by Soradora. It launched about one month before Janny and mallow is for the sweet floral marshmallow lovers but it has a twist to it so this is one of the most long lasting if not the longest lasting marshmallow scent in my collection it is a bit of a beast it has lots of orange blossom in here it's almost in line with that love don't be shy oriana dna but it has a twist to it not only does it have better longevity, but it has this kind of candied, 
powdered violet note, which makes it unique. Oh, this one is beautifully, beautifully done. Still very new to my collection, but I think it's amazing, especially for the floral marshmallow lovers. When I think about all of the kind of orange blossom marshmallow fragrances in my collection, this one has to beat them hands down. And that violet note just adds a unique twist. It dries down with a kind of sugary musk note, which is beautiful on the skin. This projects amazingly, and you don't need to wear a lot of this to be smelt. It lasts all day. Like I said, it's a beast mode of a scent. And if you've tried Giardini di Toscana Celeste, it's in that kind of same realm as Celeste in terms of the kind of candied powdery violet note. But obviously Celeste then goes vanillic, whereas this one is more of a orange blossom marshmallow in the base. It has a little bit of fruitiness in there. I perceive it to be more like strawberry marshmallow, but it is actually a raspberry note. Anyway, Mallow definitely stole my heart this year. And that is why I think it's one of the best new releases of 2023. Birth of Venus by Argos is another fragrance that stole my heart quite late in the game. This one is very new to my collection too, but this is such a phenomenal new release. It is so sweet. It's powerful. It's another beast mode fragrance. It's a fruity cocktail with florals in here. Really, really unique. There's also a chocolate note in here. And it's really hard to explain because I don't have anything that smells quite like this in my collection. I get this kind of tutti fruity sweetness, a mixture of florals, nothing really stands out front stage and center. It's blended to perfection. That chocolate note gives it a little bit of a gourmand edge. Now, a lot of people will probably wear this more in the spring and the summer, but this performs beautifully in the cooler climate. And yeah, I just think this is such a special new release. I have reviewed it a couple of times on my channel already, but yeah, given that this launched a lot later in the year, same as Soradora actually, it stole my heart and that is why it's in my top 10 best fragrance releases of 2023. I'm not sure if I've spoken about this one on my channel yet because it is another new release that stole my heart and it is from Ella K and it is called Musk K. And if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you will know that I really, really love my musky scents. And this one blew my socks off. <laughs> Excuse the pun, but this is such an amazing, fluffy, white, musky fragrance, which has a slight earthiness to it. I perceive there to be like kind of a buttery orris note. It's definitely got that powdered feel about it, but it's a very sensual, fluffy musk that also packs a punch. So I will review this in more detail soon. I had to include it in my top 10, even though it's so new to my collection because this is my favorite musk fragrance of the year. I love my musks and I love Ella K as a brand, actually. I think it's highly underrated. I have reviewed their fragrances here and there, but not as much as I should because I have four in my collection that I adore. And yeah, it's giving me kind of cozy sweater weather. It's comforting. It's warm. It's a hug in the bottle. And I think so many of you are going to love Musk K by Ella K. So let me know if you do want to see a more detailed review of it. I mean, I'm going to do a more detailed review of it anyway, but I feel like Musk K by Ella K is one of the best launches of 2023. Next up is Parfum de Mali Valaya. And this is one that didn't hit me straight away as a love. It took me a little bit of time to really get into this scent profile, but I do feel like this is going to end up being one of the most popular Parfum de Mali fragrances. It already is kind of popular to be honest. And in essence, this is kind of a clean, cottony, molecule type of scent with florals and broxin and lots and lots of musk. I feel like everyone perceives this a little bit differently and this will definitely smell different on different people. I said different so many times because of the type of scent profile that it is. To me, I get a lot of kind of ambroxin. 
I get a slight peppery touch. I get the florals. It's clean, it's musky, and it's almost in a similar category to Blue Talisman by X Nihilo. Whereas I would say this one is a little bit more feminine. It projects beautifully. This is one of those types of scents that you won't necessarily smell super strong on yourself, but other people will smell you and it will leave an intoxicating scent trail. And I just think this is such a fantastic new release from Parfum de Mali. I love the bottle. I think the bottle suits the vibe of the juice inside. I would love to know what you think about Valaya. Do you think this deserves to be in this list? This is just my list. It's my top 10. It's not me saying it should be everyone's top 10, but I think Valaya is a great fragrance release of 2023. So the last fragrance is Voyage à Paris by Fragrance Dubois. And this is another newer release this year. I think it is two, three months old now. And this is either my favorite fragrance from Fragrance Dubois or joint first place with Minuit et Demi. They are very, very different. And this, I guess, is borderline gourmand. It doesn't quite go there, but it has gourmand notes in here. And it's actually a beast mode fragrance too. Love at first sniff when I smelt it. In essence, you're kind of getting a fruity, I perceive it to be apple in the opening. You get caramel and you get oud. That is the kind of vibe that this fragrance is giving. The oud is very, very soft. It's got a tobacco-ish feel to it too. It's caramelized, it's sexy, it's strong, and it's definitely a head turner. And this one is blended to perfection, as you would imagine with an expensive fragrance, or you would hope with an expensive fragrance. But this is definitely a showstopper. Now, I know this is a Harrods exclusive. I don't know how long for. I don't even know if it's still a Harrods exclusive. I hope more of you get to experience Voyage à Paris because I would love to hear what you think about this fragrance. I actually haven't worn it as much as I would like to yet. This is definitely a cool weather fragrance for me. Some people would definitely wear this one all year round. However, if you know me, you will know I suffer with migraines. I can't wear super strong fragrances all the time. So there's a time and a place for me. But that being said, I think this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance, a fantastic new release from Fragrance Dubois. And I'm so happy to see them kind of venture into what I would say their old school style, kind of going back to their roots a little bit. This is a powerful fragrance. And for me, that's why it deserves to be in the best new fragrances of 2023 for me. So those were all of the fragrances that I wanted to talk to you about today. There could have been at least another 20 fragrances within this video, but as I mentioned, I am going to do a second video, which is going to be my hits and misses of 2023, and I will include different fragrances for my hits in that video, and it's specifically going to be hits and misses of launches of 2023. So stay tuned for that video. But as I mentioned in the beginning, I would love to know what you feel are the best fragrance releases of 2023. Please do let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear what fragrances you have been loving, but thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure as always. I hope to see you in a future video to come. Thank you so much and goodbye. Bye.